Okay, we are now recording. <laughs> Just uh, hi, folks. This is the Amherst Energy and Climate Action Committee. And in my usual introduction, I'll say that ECAC was organized to guide the town in meeting its climate mitigation and resilience goals. Those goals and the plan for getting there uh, are adopted from the Climate Action Adaptation and Resilience Plan, or the CARP, which was accepted by the town council in 2021. It takes 2016 as a base year and calls for a 25% reduction in carbon emissions by next year, 50% by 2030 and neutrality by 2050. So this committee has two primary functions. One is to advise the council, the town council and recommend uh, or propose policies and actions that'll help us meet the climate goals. And the other is to promote a just equitable and speedy climate response through outreach and engagement of town and local stakeholders. So with that, uh, we need a note taker for today and we can get started on the agenda. Let's see, where are we? Don did it last time. So, uh, Don, Tony, you wanna give it a try this time? I can do that. Excuse me. Okay, so with that, um, first thing on the agenda is always to review last week's minutes. Lori, do you want me to share my screen? Um, let me go ahead and do it, if I may, because this has been a very hectic week for those of us sure. who teach at UMass. Uh, so I haven't had a chance to really review them as thoroughly as I would have liked. So I want to, uh, here they are. I just want to make sure I share the right screen here. ECAC minutes, share. Okay, there we go. And that way, by doing it myself, I can maybe page a little more slowly through. Um, all right, can you all see that? Attendance looks yes. right. Yes, you're all set. Okay, so the only, I did notice at the beginning here, uh, Golden reviewed a draft report that she had prepared. Golden discussed how we should structure the report. I, I'm not quite that much of a dictator. <laughs> maybe uh, Golder, um, you know, that, that uh, maybe suggested a structure for the report, if that's okay with everybody. Sounds a little bit like I, you know, said, we are going to do it this way. Didn't, I just think I was saying what I thought, um, how I thought maybe we should try it. So if we can just change that to something like, yeah. I've got a note. Okay, good. And then going down a little farther, I didn't quite get the finish through this. We didn't have a lot of um, updates. But we did have a lot of, well, we had a lot of updates from Stephanie. <laughs> um, Anyone have any other comments on here? <laughs> this week, we're gonna to try to get to town manager goals. And today we also have starting at 6.30, a Valley Green Energy Information Session. Other comments? There's a typo on number 10. I'll fix it. Recycling. Recycling, yeah. Right, we were going to, um, and if we don't get to that today for about lack of time, we'll put that off till next week. I don't know if, uh, well, we'll find out later if we have time. Anyone want to suggest accepting the minutes with those changes? We can make a motion. I will move to accept the minutes with the minor edit Stephanie mentioned in item 10. Oh, and the edit that, the, <clears throat> that you mentioned, Laurie, too. Up here, yeah. I'll second. Okay, and I'll stop sharing. Thank you. So in no particular <clears throat> order, Allison? Yes. Roof? Yes. Goldner? Yes. Issing? Yes. McElrath? Yes. Okay. Okay. That's our approved. 
with that, <clears throat> we are on to the second uh, item on agenda, which is always public comment. So we have one attendee. Melissa, do you have a comment for us? If so, raise your hand and Stephanie will let you into the meeting. And the hand raised thing is always right at the bottom of your screen, I hope. At the bottom of your Zoom screen. All right, if not, then we go on to our agenda. So we have a number of things that we keep on the agenda as sort of stuff we're looking for updates, periodic updates on. We don't always have updates on all of them, um, but occasionally we get a lot of interesting, interesting action. So um, first thing is on pace. Um, Don? I have none, no. Uh, Tony, coordination with local groups. Give me one second. Um, I would like to bring up the idea of sending out the Elevate uh, events calendar and newsletters to ECAC. Um, oftentimes they discuss um, energy transition work related to Amherst specifically. Um, sometimes it's UMass specific campus, but I think one of the first steps to getting that bridge connected is allowing um, both groups to like meet at the same events with the same intention for those events, which is to understand how we can keep advancing energy equity and energy in Amherst. Um, so that's all I have is just that nod to see if you guys would be okay with receiving. Um, it's usually once a month that Aaron Baker sends it out. Um, just like a list of events happening in the community on campus regarding energy transition. I think that would be great. And um, I want to discuss this a little bit more, but I want to apologize because I was on the wrong page in my notes and looking at last week's agenda. And this week's agenda had us working on the annual report first. So we're going to finish this discussion, Tony, and then we're going to go back to the annual report. That is why I needed a minute. I was like, this <laughs> corresponds with what I have. So no, it's okay. Yeah, my apologies there. So um, yeah, so I get a lot of these announcements and I actually have been forwarding them to my class recently. Um, so I think this would be great. Um, what else, is it just a matter of saying okay and sending on that information to ECAC members or, or should, is there anything else we should be doing? That's all I was interested in to start. I feel like once we get that kind of established, we can build upon it um, okay. if that time comes. Yep, I think that would be great. I think that would oh. be, um, yeah. Then right. after this meeting, I'll send um, what I have to Stephanie and then have Stephanie send it to the rest of you. Okay, cool. That would be, that would be great, Tony. Awesome. Thank you for suggesting that. There's always a lot of interesting stuff going on on campus. And we do occasionally, you know, people send stuff around, they get something and they tend to, to pass it on. But this would be a little more um, you know, putting us on a list so that we all get it. Um, yeah. Okay, so I'm sorry, let's go back to the annual report then. We'll come back to, so we got as far as uh, coordination with local groups. We'll come back to 6C later. Right now we're gonna go to the annual report and then to the block party. So the annual report, um, we're on a sort of compressed schedule today because of uh, the presentation at 6.30. Um, and let's see, where did the annual report go? I just had it up. There it is. Okay, let me go ahead and share this. Um, oh, no, that's not what I wanted to do. Share screen, annual report, share. Okay, let me make this a little bit bigger. Can you see the annual report now? And I think this is the right yep. version. Yeah, that's uh, the uh, Stephanie, I just accepted all of your changes. That's all I had time to do. Okay. No worries. <laughs> I didn't even finish reading it, I'm afraid. But um, let me go ahead and uh, just make the view a little bit bigger. What? I made it smaller, how strange, um, because probably I have the 
comments showing. How do I tell the comments to go away? Um, let me just make it bigger. Hang on a minute. Doing. Oh, I don't want to see the comments. I don't know why. I think at the bottom coming. right, you should be able to write, yeah, write more. Uh, next right. Oh, there, there you go. Well, that's right the there. Size. I see. Okay, that'll make this text bigger. Oh, that's too big. Yeah, that's too big. Hang on. Um, that's yeah. probably the easiest way to do it, though. Let me go back over to. Um, sorry, it got messed up now. Uh, no, it isn't actually messed up. It's actually okay. Let me just make my window a little smaller so this fits on my screen. Why is it giving me this comment space, which I don't really want, and not... Uh, there we go. Um, no, but then I can't edit it. Let's try this one. All right, that's ridiculous. <laughs> What did they do to Word? It usually works. Um, page width, that doesn't work. Okay, let's just make it bigger. There we go. Okay, I think that's, can you guys see that? Yes, I can read it. Okay, I'm just gonna leave it then because whatever I do seems to make it worse. Um, wait a minute, one more. It's still not doing what I want it to do. Let's just try making a little bit bigger because honestly, it's a little small for me. There we go. That's what I want. And I'll make this bigger and we're there. Okay, good. So um, the first part of this was just in the way of intro and uh, Stephanie had some suggestions to make there that I think are in here now. Yes, they are. Um, reminding you that what we are required to report on in the annual report are these five things. Progress toward climate action goals, measures taken to reduce emissions and build resilience, evaluation of the effectiveness of these measures and implementation of the measures, the funding needed to enable the measures, uh, the initiatives recommended by ECAC and community engagement. And four, we had a little trouble with, um, and one we didn't really complete. And I think probably Stephanie and I can complete that because one is, uh, the, all of the ECAT goals. So you remember I had a big table at the bottom. It's now sort of been broken out, but um, there actually it's still a table, I guess. The lines went away is all. Okay, there are all of these different goals embedded in the CARP, in the Climate Action Plan, right? And I think, Stephanie, you and I should just go through those. And I think you did a little bit. We can go through those and just, you know, put check marks or figure out some way of indicating things that are underway or that are done um, or that need to be done. Um, but I think going back up here, last time I put together a bunch of things that we've done in the last cycle, in the last year. And we had a little bit of discussion around that, just a little. And then all of the different inventories that have been now put in place, mostly by summer interns with, with Stephanie to evaluate the effectiveness and to document the implementation of these measures. And then we didn't really know what to say about funding. And I think that's something maybe for Stephanie to, to fill in more than us. Um, but I do think we should talk about what we think is important to do next. It's, it's a little bit, I, I apologize that I haven't had enough time to think about this. So I think we're gonna have to do at least one more week on this. It's just been a very hectic couple of weeks for me and I think for some of us. Um, but I would like to talk about what do we think we should be asking for town manager goals? What are the you know top two or three things, just a few things that we really think the town manager should be focusing on? There are a lot of things we could put in there, but I think we should focus on what we think the big things are that we want to suggest the town council ask for. Discuss. And, and Stephanie, what you think you need from the town count, from the uh, town manager? I have a question. Yeah, Tony, go ahead. Can you provide some examples of things you've asked for in the past? I can bring up last year's um, report. Give me a moment. Do you have it there, um, 
Actually, I have the, I have the, let's not bring up the report. Let's bring up the executive summary that I, that I did. Give me a minute and I will get it up. I have to find it. And the report. Where is it? Where in the report? There it is. Hang on, let me just make sure I have the right one. Annual report synopsis. I think that's it. So this had, whoops, that's not the final. Hang on a minute. There it is, and report ECAC final. So what I will do now is um, share this instead. Stop share. And let me just town manager goals. We had we had five sort of there were more in the report, and I sort of uh, narrowed them to five uh, I think it was five general categories of things. So let me um, share this. Okay, can you see that now? To reach 2025 town manager goals at the top? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> so there was the acceleration of the level of support for the department of sustainability. And we could just start with these and then edit, right? I don't think that would be a bad way to go. Um, because we still haven't accelerate, accelerated the level of support for the Department of Sustainability, I think, right? Stephanie, we're still hoping to get you another high, to get you a higher. It's not going to happen in this year. And yeah, if you wanted to try to continue to request it for the next fiscal year, sure. I think that would be a reasonable thing to do. Even if we think we can't get it, we should put it in. And that's also the biggest economic ask. Right. If we're going to, this is the biggest thing we need. If we're going to do the things in the, in the carp, the town needs more people to do it. Right. It needs somebody to work with Stephanie. So I would say that's probably still the number one thing, but I'm interested in what everybody else thinks. Um, in regards to building energy, we propose the town manager take a more active role in promoting it efficient energy retrofits. This turned out to be a mistake. Um, there still really isn't, I looked this up again recently. At the time, this a year ago in June, there was a big announcement, or actually I think it was a year ago in February, there was a big announcement about a climate bank going in. And I think it's now there. Uh, but the last time I looked it up, it still didn't look like something we could very easily access. So. It's Lori, I, I just have a little tiny little piece of information because I had a meeting just before this one um, in which they were reviewing information about um, Mass Save and also about the Climate Bank. And it sounds like the Climate Bank helps to fund things that Mass Save doesn't necessarily cover. I, th I think this is only one example, but for right. instance, spray foam insulation. So if there is a uh, household that requires spray foam insulation, Mass Save doesn't cover that, but the Climate Bank funding would. So uh, there's other examples, but that's just one really quick one to sort of put it into context of the kinds of things they're funding. And is that at the state level? The, the consumers state level. Directly to the state through Mass Save? Okay, so fine. So then we don't, it's not something that we would have to worry about. Yeah, uh, no, and I don't think it's through Mass Save. I think it's it's, it's, it's a separate, it's, it's own program it's not a mass save like you wouldn't yeah. i don't think you go through mass save to request no, climate bank mass housing. housing i think it's yes. through the housing department <clears throat> but there were other things like promoting the pace program you know the, the pace program in, in theory should pay for retrofits and and energy trans and energy transition for you know a big rental unit or business or um you know a big uh, some some sort of local business, right? Um, and we have, we still don't have a local pace example there. It, it's not an easy, 
Um, it, it, it wasn't, I think it still isn't a particularly easy program to access, but it's a very important program for transitioning businesses. So do we want to keep pushing that? Um, uh, the RFP for the heat pump program happened. Laurie, <laughs> sorry, I just quickly have my hand up and I just wanted to say um, something really quick about that. Ahead, Stephanie, just yeah. only that, um, you know, with the, with the, um, advent of the heat pump program, our consultants at ET will really be focusing on residences, but there's an opportunity um, where we can direct small businesses to them and we can encourage information, you know, with them pursuing information about the PACE program. So that's something where ECAC can sort of maybe help with more direct outreach to small businesses while the mm -hmm. residential piece is happening. That might be something you all could support. I'm just throwing that out there as an idea because it came in my head and I don't want it to go away. <laughs> so right. That's that's really good. I'm gonna do something here because I want to get these things down in here. Uh, I'm gonna make this uh, for 2025 notes uh, town manager goals. And I'm just going to start editing this document. So um, okay, good. So this could all be part of uh, do we still want to ask the town manager to be more active in the heat pump program? And in particular, or do we, is it, do we want to put anything in there? I would just say utilizing you all as a resource. I mean, I do think that's something that, you know, I mean, yes, you suggest policy, but, you know, also utilizing you as a resource for the as community as members as well. And I think that, like that example that I just gave you would be a great opportunity so can you say that again as a resource? Oh, I'll try. <laughs> um, yeah, um, utilizing ECAC as a resource to help promote pace with small business heat pump conversions. Okay, that's not bad. That sounds like an ECAC goal more than a <laughs> well, but it's, but I think it's recognizing you all as a resource. I, so yeah. that's, I think the point that I'm trying to make is like, you know, let's, let's ask this committee specifically for help on this particular initiative. Particularly in light of the new heat pump program, right? Right, exactly. Particularly, there we go. Um, and then here, so one, we could essentially keep pretty much as it is. Two could become something like, like this. Uh, I think it froze. Hmm? Yeah, you froze. My internet connection is unstable. Uh -oh. <clears throat> if I disappear, that's why. Um, <laughs> so I guess kind of my outlook on this is so we so you know last year or this previous year you know we've established the heat pump program. The CCA is going into effect. I guess what do we want from the town manager to continue to you know, <clears throat> build on that momentum, I guess. Like how, like how do we kind of make sure like the town is engaged and, and should that be a responsibility of the town manager of some sort? Do they have a role in that now that, you know, we've, you know, it's it's going into effect. Um, what's the continued uh, actions from the town manager right. that we need what's to the keep the momentum? After going. the CCA, and that's a really good question. After the CCA, <laughs> the heat pump program. How about, well, okay. We got, there it's is, almost like continued promote, I, I, and this is kind of very vague, but, con, you know, continued promotion and opt in uh, promotion of, of the CCA and support, it's supporting, you know, residents opting in, what have you. So, I don't know if that's a if that's a goal. <laughs> it is because the sorry, I'm sorry, I'm jumping in, but just mm -hmm. to answer your question, 
it is a goal because there are residents who have already chosen an alternative um, electricity supplier. And so those are the folks that aren't automatically opted in. And if we want to sort of reach those people, there's really no easy way and it's not easy to identify them either. Mm -hmm. So there, we want there to be some concerted effort to identify who they are. And I know um, I've identified this with our local, our partner, local energy advocates as, you know, something that they could be really supportive with. And again, you know, this is something that the ECAC could support as well. And sort of, we'd ask the town, well, again, but we ask the town manager to allow, you know, to sort of make this a priority and the use of your mm -hmm. time as a committee to sort of work on these things as well. Okay, so in regards to regional issues, we ask that you engage ECAC to help find ways to reach out to community members who have opted out of the Eversource Basic Service or Valley Green Energy, Eversource Valley Green Energy. They didn't opt out of Valley Green Energy. They, they so we well, don't want to say they opted out of Valley Green Energy. They're just they have um, they've chosen a private another an alternative electricity supplier. Yeah, opted out is a bad right. Who have chosen an alternative. Oh. Uh, energy supplier. Um, wait, what did that? What did I say there? Where'd it go? <clears throat> Where'd it go? Here goes where you ask you engage ECAC to find ways to reach out to community members who have chosen an alternative. In, in regards to the CCA, how about that? Just say regional issues. Oh, ECAC to help find ways to reach out to community members. Alternative energy supplier. To find ways to inform and encourage them to participate in CCA, Valley Green Energy. How about that? Does that work? Um, for transportation, I have a an ask, which is, I really would like to, see, we never finished the transportation plan, did we? We don't have a completed transportation plan, right? Did it ever get, I mean, in this, I'd almost like to coordinate with TAC on this one. Has anybody been going to those TAC meetings? I've been to a few, I haven't been in the fall. I'm actually going to one on Thursday. They've invited oh. me to talk about um, bike share, but I, but they also invited me to speak on other issues. So if there's something you would like me to bring, can you identify yeah. that? I, I, I'd like to find out what the state of the, you know, if the town ever accepted a plan, if there is a bike, you know, an actual transportation plan for the town. Um, and if not, would they like to, you know, go in with us on asking that to be a priority for the manager, for the town manager for the next year? Right, because I think that is really important. Um, you know, they're, they're doing the streets in my neighborhood this week and putting in nice sidewalks that go nowhere because they connect to Pelham Road, which is dangerous as ever, it's ever been. It's terrible to bike in, to bike on, and the sidewalks are horrible, and it's, uh, you know, it's a bit of a nightmare. Um, so I think, I think that. You know, I'd love to see that plan in place and at least slowly being implemented. Last I knew, it was never finalized. It was never completed. I will bring that to the meeting on Thursday. So I'll, I'll make a note here. Can we coordinate with TAC on an ask, uh, perhaps to complete the transportation plan? or start implementing it in meaningful ways, implementing it as, you know, as fast as possible. Um, and I, I would like to say to you that Tony, because you're the liaison to that committee, do you wanna come too and you can speak to it? I mean, I can talk about Valley Green Energy and, um, and Valley Bike, but if you wanna come, I could just recognize you as being there as well to speak on this issue. I just want to give you the opportunity. I don't want to jump on your toes either. No, I appreciate that. I'm actually leaving the state tomorrow. So okay. <laughs> glad that you will be there. Um, I was okay. a little worried that no one would make it. So thank you for that. Sure. Uh, do we need to leave anything in about DC charging stations? Anything more on the horizon there? The two um, still working on coordinating, getting them in. Okay, so 
maybe we should just leave that out for next year and come back to it again after those are in since that's yep. coming yes so that that's something that this uh so stephanie you will report back on this and we'll, we'll talk about that um in the regional issues we had prioritized information cca okay that was last year we just did that okay so we just we just fixed this one should we do a follow-up on the specialized code to find out how that's doing or is that should we just leave that be and just get that that's something we could just do we could just get a i'm sort of curious as to how implementation of the specialized code is going but i don't think there's a ask there <clears throat> right And this last one is also sort of a generic that we can almost leave in any year, which is that, you know, we need to keep, how, how do you feel this has gone this year, Stephanie? This is really about involving you in many different aspects of the town's uh, decision-making, right? Um, well, I don't know specifically about involving me as involving climate as a lens and as i mentioned certainly with capital purchases that is true and i would say that more departments are starting to do things really on their own and i'm not always involved okay, so sometimes good. i didn't even know things are happening and i hear like oh this department is doing xyz and it's like that's news to me um you know i think dpw installed solar on something and i <laughs> it was a small and i don't even i didn't really didn't know about it so um you know communication's not always great but i would say that things are happening you know that are using climate as a driver okay good so in that case we could just leave something like this i mean i can do some wordsmithing on it but if anyone has any suggestions what do you think about just leaving something along those lines in here stephanie and maybe we can wordsmith it together if we don't want to work on it now yeah, we can, I think we can wordsmith it later and then bring it back. So, and this is just my notes from the presentation. This, this um, executive little summary was never actually, uh, I think I did actually provide a copy of it, but it was just my notes for speaking to the town council. Um, so it was my, this was my distillation of the goals in the long, longer report, which I really think there were too many. So I like I like this sort of uh, you know connecting each of them to the issues we're supposed to be looking at anyway. Um, so anything else we should? So I had a question around so like just reaching twenty twenty five climate goals. Um, I know there was like a greenhouse gas inventory done in like 20 last year maybe for the 2022 year like for the calendar year 2022 or whatnot is is there like an established process where we're going to do that every couple years or yes. perhaps every year okay not every no not every year not every year no, okay. no it'll be every probably every three years so next year there'll be another one. Should we put that as a goal here, as a manager goal? Or? Um, it wouldn't be. Or would it be twenty twenty five. Twenty twenty, which well, is next is year. Next year. Holy year. crap! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, but we had someone in twenty three looking at twenty two. So what we would be doing right. is be doing it in twenty six, <clears throat> looking at twenty five. So actually, no, it's twenty twenty six. We would have okay. someone come do it, and that would be to see if we met our target. Right, so we want to we want to get through twenty five to see if we reached our target. Yep. Because then the next projection is twenty thirty. Right. Yeah. So, any other goals? I mean, go ahead, Steve. Yes. Well, the this draft solar bylaw is working its way through the CRC and will come to the town council hopefully in the next year, and. That is something I would like to see the town manager ask ECAC. So like you had written up here before, sort of, um, you know, consult the ECAC as that um, solar bylaw goes through the town council 
process. That's a very good point. That I think that you know when that comes to town council and gets more publicity, I think that's going to be a fairly big deal. So ECAC, how should we say this, Steve? Um, um, ask us about the <laughs> proposed solar bylaw. Um, I mean, we're going to get a chance to like provide that. input on it. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure if there's an additional role for us, but uh, you know, as the Energy Climate Action Committee, that you know, we we should be weighing in on that and acting as a resource to town council as councilors are deciding, um, you know, gathering information and deciding ultimately how to vote on it. Uh, how, how to put uh, that as a town manager goal? I guess you know, draw on the draw on the expertise in the ECAC uh, as a resource. For him and town council. I like that language, Steve. Say that again. Oh, good. I was worried that you might say it again. No. Uh, <laughs> no just just rewind the re um, draw on the expertise in the ECAC as the town manager and council are um, evaluating the draft solar bylaw. Are evaluating the draft solar bylaw. Okay, let me get this all down now. So yeah, we, ask, like we ask that the um, we ask that the town manager. I love the way Word thinks it knows what I want. Draw on the expertise in the ECAC. Uh, we ask that the hmm. How do we fix this sentence? Um, <laughs> Uh, we asked the town manager drawing the expertise in the ECAC as the town manager and council are evaluating the drafts. Actually, that's okay as it is. As the drafts will by law. A little bit repetitive, but not bad. We can yeah, always I, wordsmith it later. Yeah. yeah. And maybe you could just say town council is evaluating the draft solar bylaws. But... And town council. <clears throat> I wasn't sure the propriety of us sort of going to the town council versus the town manager, since this is town manager goals, not town right. council. So we asked well, the town manager, okay, so like this in other words, is that what you meant? Yes, fixing the, the the verb perhaps, but. Getting town manager out of the, the second occurrence of town manager out of the sentence. Or you even could just say, as the town evaluates the draft solar bylaw, you could. This will be going, this. Town manager goals are going to be going to the council, right? And then the council will pick and choose from our list to put into their list that then go to the town manager. Well, or they'll write their own thing and ignore us completely, but at right. least they'll have our own book. <laughs> so, so part of the goal here is to inform the town council, because they're going to be reading this, the councilors, of what we would like to be doing and, and be consulted. Right. So even, it has value even if it doesn't get all the way up to the town manager, the final town manager goals. Well, and I will, if I could just jump in here too about the process right now, there was a meeting last night with the CRC and public was, comment was being invited um, at points in the meeting, even more than those that were identified on the agenda. So there was a, um, a call of order from one of the counselors and so they didn't actually do that but it may happen in the future that as they're actually reviewing the draft they're going to allow public comment during that review so i would say please don't wait for the town to invite you i would really encourage you to show up at the crc meetings at this point i mean there may be there may be a point at which this is kind of tabled for a while because other things may come up that prior that become a priority over this because um, I think the big concern has been quite honestly about a particular project that in this bylaw won't even be relevant for, but I'm not sure there's full understanding about that. Um, but there are other projects that might be coming before the CRC that they actually have to respond in a more timely fashion. So I would say there are some folks and staff that aren't seeing this as a big emergency to get this bylaw done like tomorrow, um, oh. even though it's been taking a while. So I'm, 
you know, at least start coming to these. And at some point there may be a pause in the process, but I would say right now, I would encourage someone to, and maybe Steve, you in particular, because you've been attending to show up at the next one that's on the 24th, if at all possible. Yes. I was hoping to get to the one last night and got there late, but I'll try better to be the one on the 24th. Um, this is probably not the time, but I wanted to uh, ask you, Stephanie, about when will ECAC be asked by either CRC or council to provide input on the draft? The process um, is really not clear to me right now, okay. to be fully honest. I'm, I'm really not sure. I thought we had a trajectory and... Um, I'm not clear that that trajectory is at least the one that staff had envisioned. So it's really up to the chair of that committee as to how they move this along. And right now, who is the chair? Pam Rooney, Councillor Rooney. So I think, you know, at this point, I would just say attend and that could be a question that's asked. Um, but I know that this committee is identified, was it identified in the charge of the solar bylaw working group. So, and I know, I mean, Duane was your representative as chair, he was your representative. So technically your input was sort of um, through him, through his involvement in the process. So, and he was reporting out and you were attending. So I would say that the, you know, the, this next version of a draft, you may, I don't know if there's like an official point where you're going to be asked. I think that you can take it upon yourselves at some point when there's something that looks like enough of a draft that you want to comment on to sort of take that, make your comments and bring it to a meeting. But I would say attend the next few meetings to sort of get a sense of when that appropriate time might be. I'm sorry, that's vague, but that's the best answer I can give you at this time. <laughs> well, th good. thank you, Stephanie. I, and I would agree with that. I think we should take the initiative, if we're, even if we're not asked, to take the draft, whatever draft is appropriately and um, you know, complete, and provide feedback on it. Because right now, last night, they were evaluating drafts with town staff input, I believe, and trying to bring that along with town councilors input. So it's changing a lot from what the uh, solar bylaw working group has done. And it's fairly clear to me, I guess, in my opinion, there are councilors who are working with other people to make changes that I believe deviate a bit from what the working group had intended when they voted to improve it. So it's changing significantly. And I worry a little bit if it get you know if it continues to change, we may miss the boat in terms of influencing some of those changes. And I just want to say those were not staff comments. The version that Chris Brestrup and I worked on was oh. just include incorporating the edits that the CRC was making along the way. Oh, okay. They had all been comments on the sidebar, and they really hadn't ever made the changes during the course of the meeting. So what staff said is we'll take this now, we'll take these comments, we'll incorporate them, and then we'll bring you back what that looks like. And that was really all we meant to do at this stage. And then while that was happening, another version was being created um, at the same time and was presented. So at this point, I'm not really sure how they're going to move forward. I, I think that's going to be discussed at the next meeting. Well, if I may, and you could cut us off, Lori, or push us to another part of the agenda. Yeah. Um, I guess, has, is is it, do you know, Stephanie, is it going to go out to town staff like Wetlands Administrator and DPW it, and others? It has. It well, has. Okay. So the it version, has. the version <clears throat> that Chris and I most recently worked on that was presented during the last meeting was the version that was sent to um staff for okay. review and i will say that the things that were things were moved around um things that you know there were substantial sections that were either referenced to another section of the bylaw like the stormwater management um there was a whole lot of information there that as someone whose job formally was to uh sort of work with the regulatory process was not workable it was it was 
Okay. Very repetitive. So anyway, I mean, uh, yeah. Can I, yeah. Can I, I want to click this off because we need to, we need to move on uh, to get to the presentation on time, but I want to say, I'm going to, I'm going to charge you Steve with, with, uh, you know, deciding or figuring out or asking the question, which version should we look at? And then distributing it to giving it to tell Stephanie at which point okay. she should distribute it to all of us. Yeah. And then we'll discuss it at the very next meeting. Okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm a little annoyed. I would have preferred that it had come to us at the same time it went to other staff and other departments across the town. That seemed I mean, like that. We could do that now then, right? Yeah, we could. So maybe so, what I'll do is reach out to my town counselor and perhaps um, Mandy Joe, who I know is on the committee and I don't know, I'll, I'll do something and come back to you. Yes. Yeah. We, we could just take the version and do it, right? We don't have to wait for we them. Could. To yep. We don't have okay. to wait for them to ask. Right. Okay, uh, with that, let's get back to the agenda because I think there's at least one other thing we have to get to, which is the block party. I think we're going to put the recycling ban request off till next week. Um, block party is coming up, and I'm not sure we have enough people to be at it. So, Stephanie, you want to talk about that a little bit? Sure. Um, so, I am going to be sharing a table with the um, Angela Mills, the executive assistant to the town manager, which is basically just kind of a catch all for the town. Um, so, at this point, it just sounds like having your own table might not um, might not work because Laura, who was going to help out, can't now. So um, I think who can be it, there? You know, at this point, I, I'm not sure. Like, I'm not even sure who can be there. So either you come and join me, you know, in spurts and be another, you know, have an opportunity to be present. Or I was even thinking that maybe you all could even have like a just a name tag or something that says ECAC, ask me. And if you just want to walk <laughs> around, talk to people, you know, I was trying to think of creative ways of having you be present without having you commit to being at a table. Who else? I mean, can, can I ask for an update from last time? Is there anybody else who can be there? So don't, Steve can. I won't be able to go tomorrow. I'm not going to be there. Right. And, um, no, 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 a week from tomorrow. Not tomorrow. It's, it's next week. It's the 19th. Oh, it's the 19th. Mm -hmm. Why did I think it was tomorrow? I have no idea. Okay. Uh, tentatively, yes. <laughs> Let me check. <laughs> okay, so there might be two. You know, if you could do an I'm hour each, that will get us from in, six to eight. I'm going to be in Maine. So. We're going to be in Maine. I, I'm not going to promise because I'm crazy busy right now, but there's at least a small chance I'll be there. But I want to make sure we have... I would be a second person because I don't want to promise. So, and I did last year and, <laughs> but if we can get people, if we can get two people to show up from six to eight and I can make it, I might even bring the heat pump booth along with me. So, um, and I have the banner. I found the banner. I found some flyers and stuff. Um, uh, do we, I'm thinking it's going to be kind of hard to coordinate anything since we don't have another meeting then. So I guess I'm inclined to suggest that we don't do anything formal. We okay. show up as we can. Maybe we hang out next to Stephanie. Okay. Maybe we go talk to the, um, is, are the local energy advocates, are they going to have a presence? I don't know. I haven't okay. heard from them. I can reach out and ask. I guess, you know, I'll probably be there and I, I enjoy, I enjoy the party. So I'll be there and I'll yep. stand around and talk with people if they're there, but maybe we ought to yeah. not try to have any formal presence beyond Okay. A few of us hanging out. Right. So this year we will not do the block party. And I think honestly, I do think we did. We had a lot more contact at the sustainability festival than at the block party last yeah. year. So yeah. That's um, good. All right. So we made that decision and we are at 622. So we have a few more minutes. So uh, we could do some more of the, um, it, uh, the updates. So heat pumps, I don't think I have much to add. Stephanie, you want to give us, is there a staff update for that? A uh, really quick one. Um, so I met with CET and had our initial conversation about the program. Um, they have a goal of getting some kind of a plan together by October 6th. So um, we're going to start meeting more regularly. And, um, you know, at this point, they still have to develop the program a bit. So that's kind of what their focus is right now, now that they've been secured as the um, consultant administrator for that program. Okay, we'll talk more about that next time. So the climate resilient schools, I don't have anything for that either. Um, any, why don't I just ask if anyone has a, an advisory and support update? 
if not, um, I think, if we have time afterwards, are there any other really important staff updates, uh, Stephanie, that you want to give in the next few minutes since we have a few minutes? Um, uh, well, I, I will just say that I had a meeting with uh, Climate Chief Hoffer just before this meeting, but there was it was really actually not so much with her specifically as with um, DOER, uh, the mass DOER. And um, I think I would like to maybe talk about that in the next meeting because there was a lot of information that I didn't anticipate I'd hear. So I would love to wow. share some of that with the committee at the next meeting. Okay, cool. All so right. it was an agenda item. All right, so in that case, and there's no, just to make sure advisory and support, rental and building efficiency bylaw, solar, we just talked about solar, some transportation, regional and state policy updates. I don't have anything there other than the climate bill didn't pass. We talked about that last time. Nothing, it was never voted on. It died. Um, so skipping around a little in the next few minutes, uh, the, Valley, the presentation of Valley Green Energy Community Choice Aggregation will be right at 6.30. Um, so are there any other ECAC member updates? I so guess, I to, yeah, go ahead, Steve. I can do a brief one. I think Stephanie shared this with you. There's a um, <clears throat> organization I learned about, the Northeast Energy Efficiency Partnerships. They are partnering with an organization that I have heard of, ACEEE, -E -E, which I can't remember what that stands for, but they have been working for some time now on rental property energy efficiency. Yes, and the fine. call here is this new peer-to-peer -peer learning group to expand on their efforts, um, the Energy Equity for Renters Initiative. And I guess the short thing is I will, I guess, volunteer to join that group if they allow me and use that as a resource and report back what I learn about what we might be able to do in Amherst for rental uh, energy equity for renters. Was that the same thing that I sent you, Stephanie? I think I, um, hang on a minute. I think that was the one that wanted a, um, hang on a minute. Gee. This is one I sent to Stephanie and then Stephanie sent it out to ECAC members um, late last week, I think. I am confused then. Hang on a minute. Hang on, mother. Um, so that was from Stephanie? I believe so. Oh, I, well, I sent it to you and Stephanie when I came across okay. it. And I think Stephanie then forwarded it to the rest of the... And it was ACEE -E and, uh, and MEEP. Me, I, I'm pretty yep. sure... Um, or just let me just look up me here. You might have reached out to me directly about that, maybe, Lori. Yeah, I think I did. I think it was the same thing. And they wanted they wanted a um, uh, a town. If you if you tried to, did you try to enroll in that, uh, Steve? Because if it's what I think it was, they want they wanted it looked like they wanted a town employee. Yeah, and I may well, I, so I've done this for them. I've done with this done this with them before. In fact, it was about the building disclosure you know, um, building disclosure bylaw development. And so that was, you know, when we were in the middle of our process before. So I may join again, Steve, but okay. I think I would, but if I'm in, it would be easier for you to get in as well. I will already... write to the contact and ask. It, it does say they're looking for New England local government staff and municipal utility yeah, stakeholders. It. Yeah, I'm I also- argue just... that ECAC members are a stakeholder, so- yeah. I'll, yeah, I'll make that pitch. But Steve, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna yeah. definitely join as well. Yeah, okay. and I'm also interested in that. So, and I, for some reason, I'm having trouble finding the link. And I had also, I sent that to Stephanie with a query about that, if that was something that it would be appropriate for me to join. So, um, I, uh, I wasn't sure. I sort of put it off my menu, but it looked very interesting and something that I wanted to be involved in too. So I may try to enroll too, and we'll see what happens. Um, all right. So with there that, may be, yeah, sorry. Never mind. Just let's go on. I'll <laughs> I was wondering procedurally. We can just continue. I'll talk about it later. Okay. Uh well, we have a minute, so a minute or two. So you want to finish your thought? No, I was just um I was just wondering if we um if technically I, I know we've done this in the past, but I'm not sure if 
we're allowed to have two members participating wow. in the same effort. Right. So, um, because technically that could make you a subcommittee. So let me follow up. So, I mean, I will, I'm definitely going to do it because like I said, I was participating in the last effort or a previous effort. So right. I would like to do this again. Um, right. So, you know, I mean, I will say that it was very sort of, um, it, it seemed to me anyway, to be very municipally staffed focused when I participated last time. So, but I don't think that should be an, a problem or a barrier and I'd be fine if yep. we did one of you joined as well. Okay, thanks, Stephanie. Um, so with that, uh, I think Stephanie, you wanna do the introductions? We'll move on to our um, webinar. Sure, we're um, maybe just a tad bit early, but Marlena and Paul, if you wanna come into the room so I can take a minute to introduce you. Thank you so much. So, um, so I'm really excited and happy to introduce uh, Marlena Patton and Paul Gromer from Mass Power Choice. They are the consultants that we have been working on developing the Valley Green Energy Program. They are the ones who completed our application, have kept the three communities on task. Marlena, I don't know how you keep everything um, on track as you do. It's quite um, astounding, <laughs> really. Um, she's so, Marlena is so amazingly quick with responses and I would imagine that we are not the only ones that she's having to juggle responses with. So um, they've been an incredible partner and Marlena and Paul will be giving the presentation tonight instead of me because I think they will be able to answer your questions more completely, um, especially the tougher questions that we seem to have gotten at our senior center presentation yesterday. So um, with that, I will hand it over to Marlena and Paul. Um, terrific. Paul, did you want to say anything before I jump in? No, no, please go ahead. Okay. Um, so I'm going to be delivering the same presentation that I gave yesterday uh, at the senior center. So if, if I don't know if anybody happened to be there for that, but it will be exactly the same thing. Um, if you have deja vu, that's why. Um, but let me get that up and share my screen so let's see so does everybody see the, the opening slide yes we can see it okay yes sure. but your voice is a little muted like you're too far from a microphone or something uh, hmm. I can talk if I speak up. Is that better? That's now it's working fine. Okay. All righty. I'll speak up. Um. So I'm just gonna give this uh, the way I give it to the public in general. Um. Even though I know you folks probably have a leg up on um a lot of the renewable energy stuff, but I'm just gonna give you the whole thing and then and then we can dive into questions at the end. Um. I think that that kind of works the best. So introduction of Valley Green Energy. Um, it's an electricity program from and for three communities, Amherst, Northampton, and Pelham, meaning it is municipal in nature. It's not a private program, and it is only a program that um, electricity customers in these three communities can participate in. Nobody else can participate in it. So it is a public service for you folks. What is it exactly? You probably know this, but I'll just say, um, in case anyone else is listening that doesn't know, a municipal electricity aggregation is the type of program it is. And if that leaves you as confused as this dog, then the way to think about it is a form of group electricity purchasing. And it is a municipal and um, regulated alternative to all the private electricity marketing that we all get in the mail, over the phone, and sometimes at our doors. Marlena? Yes. Um, don't assume that we know anything because this is being recorded and folks will listen to it. And there are also a couple of attendees who just want to know. So great, terrific. Good. Love do, do, yeah. Good. That's great. Um, so why participate? There are a few key benefits to participating in a program like this. 
A big one is you get more of your electricity from clean sources for a price that is lower than ever sources supply price right now. So before I move on, I just want to clarify one thing here. We're talking about the supply price. So what is that? On your bill, your Eversource bill, there's actually two charges, delivery and supply. They're added together to make your total bill. Delivery is where Eversource makes its profit, and that's where they charge you for delivering your electricity, and there's a bunch of regulatory charges buried in there. Supply is the part of the bill where you pay for the electricity you use, and Eversource doesn't make any profit on that part of the bill. So we're talking specifically about that price, that piece of your bill. So you're going to get uh, cleaner electricity for a price that is lower than Eversource's current supply price. Now, we can't always guarantee that it's going to be lower than Eversource's price, and that's because Eversource's supply price changes every six months or less. So it's always changing, and we don't know what the future prices are going to be. So we can't say that the Valley Green Energy price is always going to be below Eversource's price, but it is right now. Another big benefit is three choices for that part of your bill. So if you have uh, Eversource's uh, basic service right now, which I'll go into in a minute what that is, that's one choice. You're going to have three new ones through this program for that part of your bill. And then a third big benefit is stable and consistent pricing. You might remember a couple of years ago at the beginning of the Ukraine war when everybody's electricity price swung really high. That was the Eversource supply price changing as it does every six months in reaction to the market. With a Valley Green Energy price, it's a long-term 24 month fixed and stable price. So it won't swing around every six months. That means if there's a big spike during that 24 month period, if you're participating in the program, you're not going to be impacted by it. Just like when that big spike happened a couple of years ago, everybody that was in an aggregation program that had a fixed price at that time was oblivious to it. Now, one thing I like to get out in front always is that this program is not a replacement for Eversource as your electric utility in Amherst. And in fact, you can't replace Eversource as your electric utility because they own the poles and the wires, they own the infrastructure, and they have a geographic monopoly. So if you live in Amherst, you're going to have Eversource as your electric utility, and they will deliver your electricity and handle your billing, always. What you do have a choice in is your electricity supplier, and that's the company that buys electricity and puts it on the grid for you. There are actually three ways to choose your electricity supplier in Massachusetts, or three choices, three categories of choices. One is if your utility, which is Eversource, is also your supplier. So I mentioned a minute ago that they're always your delivery company. There's no choice in that, but they can also be your supplier, meaning they can go out to the market and buy electricity for you and put it on the, on the grid. When they're providing you with that second service, they're supplying it for you, that's called basic service. And that's what we all have when we open our electricity account for the first time. It's kind of the default. It's always there for us to go back to. And when you have Eversource's basic service, you have their basic service price for the supply part of your bill. That's the price that changes every six months or less. That's the price that swung really high was their basic service price. So that's kind of the default. It's always there for us, option one. Option two, you sign a private contract with one of these companies that's marketing to you in the mail or over the phone or however they're marketing to you at BJ's. When you do that, Eversource is still your utility. They're still sending you your bill. They're still delivering your electricity. But when they calculate your bill and they calculate the supply charge on your bill, they use a price that you get from that company instead of their basic service price. But everything else is the same. And option three is your city or town signs a contract with a, an electricity supply company instead of you, but you get to benefit from it. So that is what aggregation is, and that's what Valley Green Energy is. So in that case, Eversource is still your utility. They're still delivering your electricity. 
But when they calculate the supply charge on your bill, they're going to use a Valley Green Energy price instead of their basic service price. This picture is just what basic service. It's another way to, to think about basic service. So this is when Eversource is providing you with two services supplying and delivering your electricity there on the left and on the right is you, the customer, receiving that electricity. This is basically the same picture, but it's with Valley Green Energy uh, in operation. The right two thirds of it are exactly the same as the picture we were just looking at. Eversource is still delivering your electricity and there's no interruption or change in their relationship to you, the customer. So your electricity is flowing with no interruption. They're still handling your billing. If you have automated bill payments set up or automate, automated anything, you can continue to have that with them. The change is on the left side. And that supply diagram is now in orange. And that's because we've added a new entity. That's the company that... Amherst has signed a contract with the electricity supplier. They're the one that's going to buy electricity, put it on the grid for you. And that company's name is First Point Power. So I mentioned at the beginning that one of the big benefits of a program like this is you get new choices for the supply part of your bill. So that's what this slide is about. You actually get three choices through the program, and we contrast them with Eversource's basic service, which is over on the right. So if we look to the left at those three choices and we look at the middle one, BGE Standard Green, and you see under it, it says Auto Enroll. Valley Green Energy had to choose one of these three to be the one that you get if you don't make another choice. All the programs in the state like this work that way. And there are, I should add, about 200 at this point. So everybody has to choose one option that's gonna be what's called the defaults, the one you get if you don't make another choice. So the middle one is that one, BGE Standard Green. And with that, you get an additional 10% of your electricity from renewable sources like solar and wind. When I say an additional 10%, I'll add that state law requires all electricity to include a minimum amount from renewable sources all the time. So you're already getting a minimum amount from Eversource to meet state law requirements. Through VGE Standard Green, you get another 10% on top of that. The price is 13.994 cents per kilowatt hour. These are not dollars, this is cents. And you can compare it with Eversource's residential price, which is over there on the right, of 14.023 cents. So you can see the Valley Green Energy Standard Green price is a little bit greener and cleaner for a little bit less money, which is another one of the benefits I mentioned at the beginning. You have two other choices in the program, though, and they're available by request. You can choose to get all of your electricity from renewable sources by choosing the VGE 100% green option. That one is a little bit more expensive because buying renewable energy is a little bit more expensive. Um, and then your other option is the VGE basic option. With that one, you don't get any extra renewable energy above the amount required by law. So you're really getting the same electricity mix you're getting from Eversource, but you're getting a Valley Green Energy price for it. So that's the least expensive option in the program. Again, VGE Basic and VGE 100% Green are available by request. VGE Standard Green is the one you get if you participate in the program and you don't make any other choices. All three of these prices are fixed for 24 months from November of this year when the program launches until November of 2026. You can compare that with Eversource's basic service price, which as I said, changes every six months or less. Now on your bill, you're gonna see a few changes, but nothing dramatic. It's gonna impact your supply price. So um, here's actually the first page of your bill where you have your total supply charge. So I mentioned earlier on, you have these two charges on your bill that are added together, supply and delivery. So this program, Valley Green Energy, does not impact your delivery charges. Nobody's, nobody's able to uh, impact your delivery charges. It impacts only your supply charge. 
And so we'll impact the, this total here that you see in yellow. And also on the first page of your bill, you'll see where it says your electricity supplier is. You'll see First Point, Pal first point Valley Green Energy. On this slide here, you'll see that that First Point Valley Green Energy line is repeated. And that's because this same presentation can be used for um, Pelham, which is also an Eversource community. And Eversource required us to have different designations for the two communities on the bill. So if you see, if you're an Amherst customer, you'll see First Point Valley Green Energy AMH on your bill. So that first line is the one that you would see followed by the um, First Point Power contact information. So that's what you'd see on the first page of your bill if you happen to look at your bill. And then on the second page, you would see again, First Point Valley Green Energy AMH, and then where the supply charge itself is calculated, you would see a Valley Green Energy price instead of an Eversource basic service price. But your bill is not reorganized, it's not rearranged. You can see it's basically that's the same bill. We're just replacing the pieces that have to do with your electricity supply. Otherwise, everything's really going to look familiar to you as a consumer. And that's one of the nice things about programs like these. They're really invisible and seamless for, for consumers. Your primary relationship for electricity remains with Eversource as it is now. They're still delivering your electricity. You're still calling them if the power goes out. They're still sending your bill. You're paying them. And you're not getting any other bills as a result of participating in this program. And importantly, if you're eligible for any discounts from Eversource, you'll continue to receive those discounts, like a low income discount or fuel assistance. There's no change to those discounts. Participating in the program is easy because for most people, it's going to be automatic. The state law says all these programs have an automatic enrollment model. So all those other 200 programs in the state all also use an automatic enrollment model. That's not something that's unique to this program. And specifically, it means that anybody with Eversource's basic service. So this means if you did not sign a private contract with an electricity supplier, your account would be eligible for automatic enrollment in November. And you should have received a notice in the mail bearing the Amherst Town Seal and also the Valley Green Energy logo. That notice would have all the pricing information in it. And it also has information about how to opt out. Even though this program has an automatic enrollment model, you're not required to participate. You can choose. If you don't want to participate, you can opt out before being automatically enrolled. There are three ways to do that. Or you could try the program and opt out anytime in the future. There's no penalty or fee to leave the program, and Eversource does not charge you a fee to return to their basic service price. So some common questions. What if you don't have basic service? What if you signed a contract with an electricity supplier? What about you? I haven't really been talking about you yet. You will not be eligible for automatic enrollment, nor should you be. You've signed a contract, but you can join if you want to. Enrolling's easy. You're just going to have to take a step to do it instead of it happening automatically. So you can go to valleygreenenergy.org and fill out an online form there with your Eversource account information, or you can call customer support and provide it over the phone. You can do it now when the program's launching, or if you have a contract with a great price and that contract extends for another few months, or maybe you have an early termination fee and you just don't want to break your contract for another few months, you can wait till your contract is done and then enroll. You'll still get the program price. So there's no rush there. If you have solar panels or you participate in community solar and you're getting credits on your bill or an incentive payment, there is no change. Specifically, there is no change to your credit or payment calculation. Those calculations are not tied to your electricity supply price. So you can change your electricity supply price to a lower price, for example, and those credits or those payments will still be calculated in the same way they are now with no change. As I mentioned before, if you have a low income discount or fuel assistance, no change there either. If you have Eversource's budget billing, this is one place you would see a change. 
So budget billing is what you have whenever source estimates your use over a period of time and they charge you the same amount every month. So your bill does not vary from month to month to month. And then every so often they check and see, did you use what they estimated? And if you use more, then you owe a little bit. If you use less, then you get a credit. So if you have budget billing, it will no longer apply to the supply charge on your bill. It will continue to apply to the delivery charge. That won't vary every month, but the supply charge will start to vary based on how much electricity you use each month. So if having budget billing apply to your whole bill, meaning your bill is exactly the same every month, if that's important to you, then you would need to not participate in Valley Green Energy. So this is just a picture of the top half of the valleygreenenergy.org website, just to show you uh, what it looks like. So if you go there, it looks familiar. You can see in the top right corner, there's three buttons, enroll, change your option, or opt out. Those will take you right to the forms uh, where you need to, the forms where you can put in your account information to do any of those things. If you're not comfortable doing that, you can call customer support. We use the same forms, so it's not a, a different process, but we're happy to fill it out for you if that's helpful. Um, the website also has a calculator on it, which will let you compare the program prices with the previous 12 months of Eversource's historical prices, knowing, of course, that we don't know where Eversource's future prices are going, but we do know where they, where they just were. Um, and there's a lot of other information on there just about how the program works and what the benefits are of it and different resources, as well as a customer support uh, page where you can fill out a form, get the phone number, um, and get the email address. So I think that's it. I'll take a breath and stop sharing my screen. Um, before I turn it off, if you if I if I stop sharing and you think, oh, I should have written everything down, if you don't remember anything, just remember valleygreenenergy.org and then everything's right there. So I think that's it for me. And I'll stop sharing. Okay, and I wanna ask if there are questions. I know I have some, but I think I should take other questions first. And I think that includes from our attendees. We have three attendees. If you have a question, raise your hand. Three attendees? Sorry, we have three attendees in, in addition to the panelists. Well, I can get the question. Okay, go ahead, Steve. Microphone. Um, I think you said this. I just wanted to confirm. If an account chooses to leave the Valley Green Energy at some time in the future, it sounds like we can go back to the basic service under the same terms that we have now if we're in basic service? Yes, you can always go back to Eversource's basic service. It's kind of the default that's always available to you. And there's no fee or penalty from the program or from Eversource for doing that. Okay, great. I have a couple of other questions, but I'll wait to see if... Yeah, let me, uh, wait a minute. If you if you opt out of... If, you, if you're in Eversource basic, you get enrolled in Valley Green Energy, and then you opt out. And if you want to come back in later, you're not guaranteed the same price, are you? That's a different question, right. So he asked about if there's a fee or penalty for going back to Eversource's basic service. You're talking about if you leave the program and wanna come back into the program, you're not, there's no fee or penalty, but you're not guaranteed the program price. Okay. So the program's not designed for people to bounce in and out all the time. It's designed for people to be in it. So if you enroll and opt out, or if you're offered automatic enrollment and opt out before being enrolled, and then you want to come back in later, you might get a higher market price instead okay. of the program price. Okay, so that relates to my the question that I was actually going to ask, uh, which is this program then probably will not ever appear on energyswitchma.gov, which is where people go to pick a different energy provider, right? It won't be on there, if that's, I'm guessing. Well, the DPU will allow municipalities to put uh, programs on there, we would have to figure that out because they do it by city or town, but maybe I could list it three times. We have to get, uh, it's a whole back and forth thing with each municipality has to write a letter and it's, I mean, it's just impossibly elaborate, but yes, technically it's possible to get something on there. Um, I will also say though, their system is limited in how 
you can express the renewable content. So sometimes when we get programs up there, mm -hmm. the renewable content doesn't look exactly the same as it does when we describe it on the program website because, and I've had conversations with them. They're, they freely admit that their system is very, very limited. Um, so we, we can work on it. It may show up someday and just with all these caveats. Yeah, if people are going to be opting out and opting back in, though, the prices would have to somehow change. So my guess is it's going to be pretty awkward to try to figure out how to list it on that website. Oh, but well, so if you opt out and you opt back in and you're offered a custom price, that would just be for you. That's not something that would be on the website. Right. It wouldn't be on Energy Switch Mount. And, 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 what, and right. the whole point of that website is people compare prices, right? Right. So the program, the program prices could potentially be there. But the market, so if you opt out and you come back, you're at risk of getting a market price, meaning yeah, okay. wherever the market is at that moment yeah, okay. would be what the price is. So there's no way to predict what that's going to be because we don't know who you are and when you're going to yeah. come back in. So those right. prices would not ever be there. They would be custom quoted at the time that you say, I opted out before and I want to rejoin. And then we would have to check and see, yeah. can we get you the program price or do we get you a higher price? So that would be custom for you. But on the Energy Switch website, the program, there is the potential to put the program for prices. The, yeah. okay. For the yeah. for initial enrollees. But, um, and, and as long as you're talking about percentages of energy, Stephanie, I'm gonna ask my follow-up question, which is a little technical, um, but it came up today. I, I teach a course in this now, and it came up today, um, <laughs> not quite in this context, but if I go, I think the current requirement for, for renewable energy, the minimum requirement is, is actually 62% or something very high like that. And if I look at the New England ISO and ask what percentage is currently renewable, I can bring up the website if you'd like to see it. It's 5% right now and another little bit of 15% of 15 or 20% nuclear if you want to include that. But it's almost all natural gas right now because it's after dark and a little bit of wind. And it's nowhere near 62%. So, and and I know that for, for most providers, that 62% is being made up with class three RECs, right? With RECs, they're buying, we're buying wind from Texas, which actually has a 62% green grid because it's all wind and solar, um, <laughs> which is ironic. But what does it mean? I, my understanding for this new program is that it really is class, class one RECs. We're paying for local, for local green energy. Where is it coming from when our local, when our local grid is only, you know, maybe at best 20% renewable on a good day? So my my guess is that Paul, what is what she's seeing the residual mix would be my guess. Yeah. Uh, the, 5%. The, yeah. So that's that's it's it's actually probably the system. You think mix. it's a system mix? It's, it's a system right now. Much. Yeah. But the, I think there, there's a really good and sort of complex question. So one thing is that renewable content for state requirements and for the program are based on generation over the course of the year, not at any one particular moment in time. So you're going to have a different mix at 5 p.m. than you are at 3 a.m. than you are at 7 a.m. Different. But days it's never time. anywhere near 62 percent in New England. It's almost That's always 60 percent natural gas. Correct. Well. The other thing is that usually the numbers on the ISO grid are New England generation, and they don't include the imports, whereas wow. the state 62% includes imports, which is largely hydro from Canada. So that's how the state gets up there. The state also in their numbers counts nuclear. So you've got a big chunk of nuclear, you've got a big chunk of Canadian hydro, and then you've got some wind, also some imported wind as well. There's a bunch of wind that comes in from New York State. So you're correct that depending on what you look at, you're going to see very different numbers. Um, and then just to like go one step further, the program, although 62% is, the, is the, well, 62% of the total, to address just one point, none of it is from Texas in, in anybody's number. The 62% is all either generated in New England or imported into New England. That's the 62%. Um, but though, because the most people, most programs and most participants in program care about the class ones, we really tend to focus on those in our reporting. So there's a state requirement of 24% class one 
and then we report the amount of additional class ones over and above that to give right. the program total. Okay, gotcha. That thank you very much. I have been wondering about that. So Stephanie, I think you were next, and then Steve. Thank you, Lori. Um, Marlena, can you explain the significance of the October second opt out date? If people can opt in and out at any time. Um, because we're telling people that they should be opting out by October 2nd. So if you could just um, address that. Sure, yeah, the October 2nd deadline is if you don't wanna be, auto if you're eligible for automatic enrollment and you don't wanna be enrolled at all, you need to opt out by October 2nd to prevent that from happening. But if you wanna try the program out and opt out later, you can always do that. You retain your right to opt out at any time uh, for the duration of the program. Thank you. My question, I guess, was, was I think was answered <laughs> with, your, uh, with Laurie's, uh, your response to Laurie's questions just a moment ago. Uh, but let me see if I understand this correctly. Um, with the VGE standard green, the I'm getting 10% additional, and that is Massachusetts class one recs. Correct. That's additional. And if I went with the VGE 100% green, that additional 76%, that is also mass class one recs. Correct. The VGE 100% green is a 100% class one offering. So it takes the 24% required by law plus the 76%. Correct. Okay. That's good to know. Thank you. <clears throat> Very interesting. Okay, cool. Um, other questions? Steve, you, Steve, you have another one? I do have another one. Uh, my employer in Amherst um, has about a dozen accounts with Eversource and our business office receives at least one postcard. Um, is there a way to confirm by account number which ones are eligible for VGE? So if you received a notice, the notice, the formal notice, the, the reply card that came with it has the account number on it for the account that is eligible for automatic enrollment. So you can see right there, um, all of them have the potential to participate whether or not they're eligible for automatic enrollment. That's just maybe a choice. So if they have a private contract, if they're enrolled in a private contract and they're not eligible for automatic enrollment, your employer could still make the choice to enroll them. It just wouldn't happen automatically. That said, if their commercial accounts or large commercial accounts specifically, many find they can get better prices outside aggregation programs. So large commercial account holders typically don't participate in large numbers, but the reality is any metered customer in Amherst would be able to participate if they want to. Okay. Yeah. I think in our case, we have a couple of really big accounts and those are an outside supplier, but a bunch of the other ones are small, um, basically residential accounts of properties that the, that the employer owns. Um, all right. Yeah, I think those, If assuming we don't already have a, a different provider, then they will automatically. So we could check the invoice, the current bills, and see that it says Eversource Basic, basic Service. Um, so mostly, yes, uh, with one caveat. Well, two caveats. One, if they were opened very recently, they might have been opened after the mailing list that we got from Eversource was created. So they wouldn't be on this round. Um, these uh, notification mailings will go out on a rolling basis now once the program's up and running. So they would be incorporated into a future notification mailing. So if it's very new, it might not be there. Or if for some reason um, the account holder asked Eversource to block the account from being enrolled with a third party supplier, then the account could be on basic service but would not be eligible for automatic enrollment. Oh, um, so if if you got, if the notice came in the mail and the reply card has that account number on it, then it's eligible. If you're, if you have a list of accounts and you wanna just check and see if they were on the list, you can always call customer support and they can, they can look up the account numbers. Okay, that's perfect. Thank you. Yep. Don? Yeah, I, I probably have a really stupid question, but I'm hoping I understand this better. Um, You've indicated that if if we, as my wife and I do, have solar panels that generate um, electricity that now uh, goes presumably through Eversource or however it gets to the grid, that nothing will change. And, and I'm a little confused because 
since we put the tracker in in our front yard five years ago, I've never gotten a single bill from Eversource. Um, and does this electricity that we generate that goes wherever it goes, does that also mean I don't get a delivery charge? I, I don't I don't quite understand. So that's my question. My guess is the excess electricity you're selling into the grid is covering the cost of your build right now, which is terrific. That that is what happens frequently, but there is going to be an underlying an underlying bill. Um, but you're selling a lot back into the grid. Okay. So so even though they don't send me a bill, there is some underlying record somewhere of that. Yes, uh, yes. If you have an account with Eversource, then yes. And if your panels are not producing in the middle of the night, but you have anything running electricity, you're taking from the grid. So they're going to be tracking that. Yeah, no, I, 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 I understand that. So, so that won't change at all. Um, our panels will continue to produce electricity and Eversource will continue to apply whatever credits get applied to whatever our new charges or our new rate is through Valley Green Energy. You got it. Yes. There's no change to that. There's no change to how they're calculated. The underlying calculation for your supply charge for when you are taking from the grid, that will be impacted by Valley Green Energy. And um, it will also, depending on which option you participate in, it will also mean that of what's on the grid, you'll be buying a portion that's cleaner um, if you participate in the standard of the 100% green options. Um, but the credits will be calculated the same way and applied in the same way. Thanks. I appreciate that. You're welcome. Okay, any other questions? You should get a bill. I, it's very curious that you're not. You're supposed to get a bill, even if you're yeah. ahead. Yeah, I, I don't know why. <laughs> We, Maybe we, you signed up for paperless billing and they're just, you might get an email notice. Maybe it's going into your junk mail. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, but you can go to the Eversource website. And if you have your account number, you can go and see your invoices online. Okay. Great. I'll be able to do that. <laughs> just to be sure. Interesting. I'm not sure we ever signed up for paperless billing way back then but maybe you're right steve maybe we did and i don't remember yeah one of your kids did it for you <laughs> one of my kids did it for me that's more likely yeah. all right are there any other questions from the attendees jane or melissa if you raise your hand we can let you in to ask questions If not, I think we should thank uh, thank uh, Marlana and um, and Paul again. Thank you <laughs> for being here. Most welcome. And I uh, really appreciate it. And for answering our questions. Anything else, Stephanie? Anything you want to say? Uh, no, I just wanted to thank. Paul and Marlena for um, agreeing to do this session as well. It was kind of a last minute add on. So thank you so much. And I do want to say just for um, folks that are here as attendees and they might want to spread the word as well that this session is recorded. The ECAC meeting is recorded and that it will be available on the Amherst Town of Amherst YouTube channel under committees so they can watch it again if there's information that they want to go back and check. All right. Thank you again, Marlena and Paul. Thank you. Well, thank, thank you. you. Have a great evening. Good night. And I think we don't have too much left on the agenda just to think about next week's agenda and to ask for any other public comments. So um, did I miss anything? Uh, so items for the next agenda meeting. Oh, ECAC member updates. Any other updates? We sort of rushed through that before. And if not, items for the next agenda. I think we have a bunch. We're going to do the, um, we're certainly going to 
come back to the finalize, I think, the annual report. Uh, town manager goals. We'll, I'll try to send out something to everybody this week. Um, the recycling ban request needs to be on there. Um, and other than that, I think we're just the usual reports. Am I missing anything? Stephanie, was there something you wanted to? Yeah, I had. I mean, I think I can do it through uh, during staff updates. I just need a little more time. Um, for that particular item next meeting um, right. regarding mm -hmm. the follow-up with the meeting with right. uh, Climate Chief Hoffer. Right, right, right. Love to hear about that. You can put that on as a separate as a separate agenda item if you'd like. I think you probably should to remind us to, well, it'll take a little time. Okay. Anything else we should put on? Anyone? I guess discussion of the solar, the draft solar bylaw. I right. suspect that by the next meeting, there may be a draft that, I guess at the very least, we could present it. And then as a homework assignment, ECAC members could review that draft. And then we have a conversation at the following meeting. Although if you have it before then and you want to give it out right away, um, we can discuss it at the next meeting too. So, Yes, that's, yeah. Okay. I'll have access to the next version if you want me to just automatically forward it. Yeah, that would be great. The, the next version that's yeah. got compiled comments, when, whenever that becomes available. That, if you could so that won't be that. till the 24th. I mean, I don't know. It, it'll be in the meeting packet, I would assume. The 24th. For the, oh, oh, for the 24th. The CRC. Yeah, I'm not, actually, I'm really not sure if there'll be a new version for that packet or not. I'll just, whenever it if there's one, I'll get it to you. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. I noticed at the meeting yesterday, there was kind of confusion about different versions with different sets of comments in it. Yes. So Hopefully like that will be resolved by the next CRC meeting. So maybe we can just put whatever, you know, whatever, whenever you think it's cooked. Okay. <laughs> off, um, let's put it in the packet, but hopefully by the next CRC meeting, which is the 24th. Is that what I understand? Right. September 24th. And then we'll see it right after that and have input hopefully for the next one. And I'll, I guess I'll warn, warn ECAC members that it's a fairly hefty bylaw and there's quite a bit in it. So when it comes available to you, you'll you'll want to budget some time to read it. <laughs> okay. Thanks for the warning. <laughs> <laughs> There'll be a quiz. There'll be pop quizzes all the more, on it. All the more reason to keep the annual report brief. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, if there's nothing else, then public comment. I think we just have one attendee left. Melissa, if you have a public comment, go ahead and raise your hand. And if not, if not, then I think, oh, uh, why is my hand up? What, wait, uh, I wait. don't know. But I'm just. Why are there two of me? Yeah, exactly. I'm not really sure. Oh, that's weird. That's pretty weird. That's not me. Oh, it's Darcy. Uh, it's Darcy. <laughs> Hold on. I'll. How are you logging? Hold on. Name? I'm. Why am I not? I'm trying to allow Darcy. Darcy, you should be able to speak. Are you? Yeah, can you hear me? Okay, yes, we can hear you. Go ahead. Yeah, I just used the link that you sent out today, Lori. So I don't know. Oh, I supposed to send out the webinar, the uh, panel. You sent your own, you sent the panelist <laughs> link out. <laughs> um, <laughs> I just wanted to let you all know that um, on Monday at the town council meeting, the issue of the, of the waste hauler proposal came up with the, uh, um, curbside compost pickup and, um, a, you know, getting a contract with a hauler with a pay as you throw fee structure. Anyway, we, uh, the council voted unanimously to advise the town manager to issue an RFP that would not necessarily be binding, but would give us the cost information that we need to move forward. So um, that would be something that would be really great if ECAC could include it in the town manager goals again. Um, you know, it has been for like the last three years. And that that 
you know, that specific goal is in the client, the CARP. Um, and right. it's for after 2025, but guess what? We're right. almost there. Yeah. <laughs> and so sorry. anyway, whatever you could do to help push that along would be appreciated greatly. Okay, maybe we can um, stick that and on the agenda for next time as well. Uh, we want to talk about the recycling anyway, and it's not unrelated, so. Do yeah. we want to identify it as a separate item? Um, why don't we or just do call waste caller? And I, I don't know, is it worth a separate, separate item or should we discuss them both at once? I think the recycling question that came up, it was mostly a question that needed to be answered. And then depending on how it's answered, it would be part of any waste hauler. Just, oh, well, no, it was a little more than that. It was just about the, it was just about the transfer station, wasn't it? Why don't we just put it as a separate item? Separate. All right, yep, yep, yep. Is this your regular meeting time? Yes. About 5.30 to 7.30 now, just for this, at least for this semester, since I teach till 4.30. Okay, great, thank you. Sorry about sending the wrong link. That was, uh, I still haven't figured out. We only get panelist links. We don't get the regular ECAC meeting. Yeah, you only regular. get you you each individually get your own panelists link. So you shouldn't be sending that one out. You can direct people to the community yeah, uh, yeah. Just, calendar or the public the boards and committee calendar. And that's normally what I do, but I didn't have time to find it today. So I just sent out the link I had, which was <laughs> oops. Sorry about that. All right, so uh, now there's two of me, <laughs> three of me. Is there somebody else who would like to make a comment? Who else is the other Lori Goldner? We have Darcy and someone else is using that link that I accidentally sent out. Um, well, if there's nobody, no other questions, then um, Stephanie, why don't we uh, we have a do we have a move to adjourn? I move okay. to adjourn. Right. I'm sorry about the link confusion again. Uh, so second to adjourn. Anyone? No, I'll second me. to all adjourn. Right. See y'all in two weeks. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Yep. Thank you.